What is a KVM switch and does it actually matter? Well in this video, which has been sponsored by Philips, the monitor manufacturer, we'll be covering everything you need to know about it and giving you a real world example of it. Now KVM stands for Keyboard, Video and Mouse. You might even see it listed as KVMP, which is Keyboard, Video, Mouse and Peripherals. Indeed, these technologies operate in the same way. They are hardware-based devices which are either external or in this instance, in the Philips 27B1U5601H, a built-in system that allows you to plug in your peripherals directly into the monitor and then control different source devices, such as let's say your laptop and your desktop computer. Now there is also different applications of KVM whereby you might see them integrated within data centers, allowing let's say an IT professional to control a multitude of different data racks or servers all within a singular terminal. And then you've got different KVM technologies, let's say KVM over IP. But here we're going to be concentrating purely on the KVM switch which are built into a monitor and of course the one that you might be most accustomed to when you're looking around and indeed shopping for a new monitor to buy. Now while that's all very impressive, a KVM switch actually offers far more versatility than you might actually expect. Now in this respect I have got a Philips monitor that has got a USB Type-C port connecting it up to my Microsoft Surface Go, a display port cable that goes onto my desktop computer, I have got two USB Type-A ports which are used by my mouse and keyboard and I've also got an Ethernet cable which is connected directly into my router. Now here the latter effectively allows my computer or my Microsoft Surface Go to use the Ethernet cable connectivity directly via the KVM switch which is built into the monitor. Now this is certainly very impressive because for those people who do not have fast internet on their laptop or indeed want to connect up to let's say a work network then they will be able to do so via a built in KVM switch on a monitor and that is extremely impressive. Aside from this, a laptop can also be simultaneously charged while also displaying video, making it a very handy tool of constantly keeping your laptop on charge and not running out of battery while it is in use. Now moving past all of that, we get onto the setup process, and frankly, it's actually very intuitive. At least with this Philips monitor, with its built-in KVM switch, it's pretty much a plug and play solution. You effectively have to plug in your peripherals, your networking cables, power, and of course your display inputs, and then you're pretty much good to go. However, there's certain things that you might want to consider and things I thought I should highlight. First off, on the monitor's on-screen display, or OSD for short, you have got a KVM function, whereby you'll be able to manually adjust where the KVM is actually being pointed towards, and therefore means that if you've got a certain source device that you want to prioritize, you might want to select it. Equally, of course, from your monitor, you want to switch between the different inputs in order to show where the KVM should actually be pointing towards, and therefore initiating the peripherals. Now the other point is that if your monitor is set to go to sleep after a certain amount of time via your power settings, you might want to disable this. Purely because if the computer, let's say in this respect my desktop computer is set to have its monitor sleep after 15 minutes and I've switched over to my laptop for more than 20 or 25 minutes, when I were to switch back to my desktop computer, my peripherals might or might not initiate. And this is because the computer thinks that the monitor has gone to sleep, when reality it's only being used with a different device. So this is a small little thing that you might want to disable in terms of your Windows settings. Speaking of which, the monitor's resolution and refresh rate should be set correctly as well. See here, your desktop computer might be capable of better bandwidth versus your laptop, and of course vice versa. Make sure that you set the right display resolution and refresh rate in order to get the best sort of experience from the monitor that you're purchasing. So there we have it. Hopefully this video has covered everything you need to know about a KVM, be it from what it is and actually how it comes to be used in real world applications. I'd be curious to know if you guys actually look for a KVM switch monitor when you're making a new purchasing decision. Let me know down in the comments section below. Now yet again I'd like to thank Philips for sponsoring this video and if you've liked what you've seen and want to see more from the channel definitely do consider dropping a like, subscribing and hitting that bell notification, all of which would be greatly appreciated. As such I've been Totally Dubs and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.